listening to This Week in Big Sky Football. A comprehensive look at all this week's action in Big Sky Football. Now here's your host, Scott Gerrard. Welcome on into the 2015 college football season and welcome on into the first edition of This Week in Big Sky Football. I'm Scott Gerrard. What a great way to kick off all the action in the Big Sky. Should be another great year, and we've got a big show on tap for you. Guest today, uh, we'll start with North Dakota coach uh, Bubba Schweigart here in a moment. Also, Portland State coach Bruce Barnum in our second segment and wrap things up with one of our favorites uh, from Stats. Craig Haley. All right, so let's get down to some scores from week one and Thursday's action. Uh, not necessarily a barn burner in Logan, Utah, but Southern Utah nearly pulls off the upset against Utah State. Southern Utah had a 9-5 late lead, but a USU school record punt return ended up giving the Aggies a 12-9 victory. Fort Lewis took on Montana State. Montana State quarterback uh, Dakota Prukup throws two touchdowns in the 45-14 Bobcats victory. Nevada gets the win against UC Davis. Final score there, 31-17. There was also a game on Friday as Weaver State coach Jay Hill took the Wildcats to Corvallis, Oregon to face off against his old boss Gary Anderson, who happens to be the new coach at Oregon State. Weaver State's uh, Josh Burton had a pick six, which put the Wildcats down a score 13-7 at the end of the third quarter. However, Oregon State... Ends up with the victory in that game, 26-7. to Also, Saturday's action included a full slate of games with a mix of games against FBS teams. Portland State opened up the day with the big win, knocking off Washington State as the Vikings created one of two shockers across the country. Uh, Cougars got that 24-17 victory. Cornerback Aaron Sibley closing the game with an interception. And then North Dakota got the win against Mountain West Wyoming. Uh, UND picking up a wire-to-wire victory over the Cowboys 24-13 in a game, frankly, that wasn't even that close. Freshman running back uh, John Santiago with two touchdowns. Eastern Washington opened up against last year's FBS runner-up uh, Oregon. Eagles wide receiver. How about this line? Cooper Cup with 246 yards, 16 receptions, three touchdowns, uh, the touchdowns and the receiving yards, both records at Autzen Stadium. However, Eastern ends up with a loss, 61-42. to Other games included non-conference games between Big Sky opponents. Montana hosted Cal Poly. Grizz, a weekend after knocking off North Dakota State, lost uh, by a score of 20-19 to with a field goal from Alex Vega. Also, Northern Arizona beat 24th ranked to Stephen F. Austin, 34-28. NAU quarterback Case Kukas was named the Stats FCS National Freshman play, freshman of the Week. Several Big Sky teams also played teams from Division II Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference over the weekend. North, Northern Colorado picked up a win over Western State, 42-34. Also, Idaho State knocks off uh, Black Hill State, 55 to nothing. the program's first ever shutout in a decade. And Sacramento State beat NAIA Eastern Oregon, 41-20. We're now joined by the head coach of the University of North Dakota, Bubba Schweigart, uh, joining us here on This Week in Big Sky Football. Coach, how are you? I'm doing fine. How are you? Doing well. Now, this is your second season in North Dakota. Uh, what kind of statement does it make about your football team to open up a win over an FBS opponent? Well, you know, we're uh, happy with the win, and we think it was a good step for our program. You know, we aren't uh, big into Making statements and things like that, we try to keep things in the proper perspective. But uh, sure, uh, happy for our fan base, happy for our players. I thought our coaches had a good plan going out there, and our guys executed it very well. Now, obviously, you want your kids to be focused on the next week. How much time do you give them to celebrate a win like that? You know, we talked about it right after the game. We said, hey, you should feel good about this. Uh, you celebrate. You feel good about accomplishments. But we get out on Sunday. You know, we knew there was going to be plenty of mistakes to correct, and and he obviously uh, saw those when we saw the video, and, and that's what we expected from our team, to uh, enjoy it on Saturday night. And then on Sunday, we get back to work and review the video. And I had a day off Monday, and, you know, we're going to learn a lot about our team as we get out on the practice field today to see if we're focused and have a lot of energy getting ready for our next opponent. Was this the kind of game that you felt like going into it, if your team played well, you'd have an excellent chance of winning? Well, we feel like... Uh, that every week, you know, if you have a good plan and your guys play hard and and um, you feel like you have a chance, you know. So one thing that we thought really helped us was we were good on first down. Our offense didn't have any penalties, and we didn't turn it over, and that really increases your chances to have positive results. And then defensively, we tackled well, and we were pretty good on first down. So that's really what what kind of transpired in the game and, you know, so you never really know going in. But obviously, if you don't have turnovers, 
and you can stay away from penalties, that really helps your chances. Killer pre uh, freshman performance from John Santiago. He's a freshman, rushed for 148 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that performance, and is that something you expected that young man to have right out of the gate? Well, I don't think you can expect that, but uh, <laughs> we did like him in the recruiting process. I will say that. You know, we saw him in our camp, and he was very elusive and had good ball skills. And then we, you know, get him to fall camp, and uh, we had him at receiver and uh, got banged up at the running back position and just needed to add some talent to that position. So we uh, put him back there and gave him a shot, and he showed some good skills. And, and uh, you know, what we really liked on Saturday, he's really got a great competitive spirit. And after the game, I really liked him. He's really humble, and uh, he knows he made mistakes in the game, and he feels like he can do better and get a lot better, and that's going to be important. That's how we all need to approach our, our jobs here at UND football. And, and uh, John we're, you know, did a good job of that. We're excited to have him back there, and, and hopefully he can continue to get better and better. You talked a little bit about you liked him in the recruiting process. What was the, what was the process like that ended up uh, him playing for North Dakota? Well, I had an... Uh, a call from an old friend of mine uh, that I had recruited out of high school and chose another school. That was now his one of his coaches. And, uh, you know, I said, hey, it would be important for him to get up to camp. We want to see him, see what he can do and see his skills. So he came up for a one-day camp, and uh, we made him an offer after that camp. And later in the summer, he committed to us. And, you know, he stayed committed, and we uh, built a good relationship with his family. He comes from a wonderful family. And we were happy that he stuck with his commitment. And, and uh, that's kind of how it came about. And mm -hmm. then we watched him his senior year, and, you know, he's a good track man, so he's got real breakaway speed and, and just really happy to have him as a part of our program. So you have Drake this week, then rival North Dakota State next week. Uh, so let's talk about, you know, you went back to the film room and you saw some things you wanted to work on. As you look over the next couple of weeks, what are some of the things, your points of emphasis, that you think this team needs to address to continue to improve? Well, we got to be more solid in special teams. We had some breakdowns there. We gave up a punt return that we weren't happy about. We had too many penalties on special teams, which is really concerning uh, because we think some of those were uh, a lack of discipline, not a lack of effort. But, you know, we got to learn uh, how to go about our business out on the football field. So that was concerning. Defensively, obviously, gave up an explosive play for a score. And if you want to be really, really good on defense, you can't give up 90-yard touchdown passes and change the momentum of the game. And that's really got their heart started out there last week and put us in a different mode. But, uh, you know, and then offensively, we still uh, got to become more consistent at assignments. You know, John, uh, one touchdown run, John just made the play. We blow an assignment, and the guy's on block, but John mm -hmm. was able to uh, make a miss. Uh, so, you know, constantly harping on those things and, and just really harping on, guys, it's all preparation. That's what I was really – happy to see our team do for our opener was really prepare and now it gets more difficult because you have less time you know we took a couple weeks to prepare for our first opponent and we don't have two weeks to prepare for our games now well coach congratulations on the win we appreciate your time keep it rolling and we look forward to catching up with you again soon Thank you very much. It's great to be on your show. You got a Bubba Schweigart, the head coach of the University of North Dakota. His team got a upset victory over an FBS opponent. We'll talk to the other Big Sky coach that did the same this past weekend. That's Portland State coach Bruce Barnum. It's all up next. You're listening to another edition of This Week in Big Sky Football. In the NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision, the game is played with perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. As he works to honor the game and respect his teammates, opponents, officials, and fans, every FCS player grows in his responsibilities as a student and as a member of his campus and community. Dedicated to personal growth and success in the classroom, the NCAA Division I FCS. Every down, every day. We play to win, but it's bigger than winning. It's about authenticity, being true to yourself, genuine dreams and a country big enough to fit them, values and hard work, giving your best and giving back, working together, building a tradition bigger than any one of us and showing the world every day who we are and how we play. We're Big Sky. We are the heart of the American West. Welcome back to This Week in Big Sky Football. 
segment number two here on this weekend, Big Sky Football. Here in a moment, we're going to chat with Portland State coach Bruce Barnum as his team got a upset victory on the road against a Pac-12 team. We'll chat more about that game here in a moment. But we want to give you a lowdown on the Big Sky games that are going to be televised this week, starting with uh, Drake as they will play North Dakota on Saturday. That game will be televised by Midco and Fox College Sports with a 5 p.m. kickoff central time. Eastern Washington's game with Northern Iowa will be available on ESPN3 as well as SWX with a kickoff at 1 p.m. Central. Weber State's game with North Dakota State will be on ESPN3 kicking off at 1.30 Mountain Time. Pac-12 Network has a couple of games featuring Big Sky teams this weekend. First off, Sacramento State will play at Washington. That game will kick off at 11 a.m. Then Cal Poly will square off against Arizona State. That game with an 8 p.m. kickoff time. Both those times, by the way, are uh, Pacific time. Also, Northern Arizona's game with New Mexico Highlands will be televised on Fox Sports Arizona and Fox College Sports. Kickoff at 5 o'clock Mountain Time. And Root Sports, your Big Sky's official TV partner for the 2015-2016 season. Their first game will feature a non-conference matchup between Big Sky schools. As Montana State travels to Cheney to face Eastern Washington, that game on September 19th. The game will be televised, uh, uh, will also be available, excuse me, on DirecTV's audience network and always remember you can watch home games in big sky venues through watch big sky go to watchbigsky.com for more information all right time to go out to the phones welcome in the head coach of the portland state vikings bruce barnum coach what a win to go to wazoo and pick up that w how about that scotty uh the big sky is all over the place aren't we it really uh, it was fun kids had a great time kids played hard uh, it, it was a great day in Pullman, and uh, it was honestly it was fun watching the rest of the Big Sky. I mean, uh, top conference in the country. You know, this is the first game he coached as a head coach in Division One football, and uh, he set the bar pretty high with that first W. How about that? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I quite follow that up. I mean, well, uh, now I got to go uh, see uh, Coach Kramer. You know, with the Idaho State thing, I think he's picked. Oh, probably 41-point favorite this week. So it doesn't get any easier, that's for sure. You're down 10 at halftime. What do you say in the locker room to try to, you know, get your guys to believe that they can come back and win that game? Last guy did a double backflip, actually. We're only down two yeah. scores. Um, they had the ball. You know, we gave them some long fields. Our special teams um, honestly kept us in it and gave us a chance uh, because they had some long fields. And then they had a field goal. Uh, we blocked the field goal. And all of a sudden, we're in the locker room. And uh, offensively, you know, we, we were a little high and outside on some throws. But we didn't have any three and outs. And we were moving the ball, you know, when we didn't trip over ourselves. So uh, we, I came in saying, you know, all right, we got a chance here. Uh, we got to put something together. Uh, and we had a little help. We walked outside. It uh, started raining a little harder. And, you know, uh, I think that affected uh, the Cougie a little bit, but it set us up for a good second half. Aaron Sibley had a couple of really dramatic plays in this one, blocked a field goal, also had an interception, and I'm sure stuff that the average fan probably didn't see as well. He was making some big plays. What, what do you have to say about that young man's performance and what he meant for that team on Saturday? Great job. You know, he, he's a huge part of, the, of our defense right now, and, um, Scotty, I saw 11 hats on the football. It, it, it was nice to see. I don't know if I ever saw just one guy, um, you know, tackle um, the Cougs on Saturday. But And Sib is a guy on the sideline, uh, always smiling. Uh, they have confidence. They, they got some confidence out of that football game. We saw it grow um, from the first half when we blocked the, the field goal. All of a sudden, there's a little spark. And not that it was bad. You know, we were kind of a bunch of lunch bell guys going to the factory up until that. And we started to say, okay, you know, we're getting a couple breaks. And, you know, Aaron Sibley's a leader. That's why I brought him over there to, you know, the big sky thing. He, he represents on and off the field everything uh, that we're trying to get done here at Portland State. In the spirit of full disclosure, we originate this show out of Salt Lake City, so I'm very familiar with Alex Caressa and the path that he took to get there to Portland State. Uh, a good young man um, and, and a kid that definitely has a chip on his shoulder because he's been told all of his life he can't play quarterback or he's not big enough to play quarterback. Well, he sure played quarterback well for you on, on Saturday. Talk a little bit about his performance and what you expect to see out of him this year. 
Oh boy, uh, what a performance and what a tough decision. I mean, he came in, he had a, a, a position with probably the most competition of any um, on this football team, but that's what we wanted to create there. But I can't say enough about him, you know, and whoever said he couldn't play quarterback, um, I tend to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, what a game. I can't say enough. It was a gutsy performance. Um, he, the speed got us, you know, on, on a couple plays, um, Scotty, but you know, I would expect that when you play a, play up um, in the Pac-12, but he did enough in that last drive. I mean, that last drive um, that he put together, and it wasn't in the air. I mean, it was it was a, a monsoon, uh, but he did some things that uh, weren't X's and O's. He moved the chains uh, sometimes, and I think the Cougs thought they had it beat, you know, had him beat. All of a sudden, he's sliding by him. So, mm-hmm. great day for him, uh, and expect more out of him. Portland State head coach Bruce Barnum, kind enough to join us here on this week in Big Sky Football. Coach, you're nationally ranked, coming in 24th in the uh, stats, FCS Top 25. Do you read into any of that stuff early on in the season, or do you try to try to keep that stuff to the side and not pay much attention to it? Goose eggs, Scott. Yeah, you know, that would get you a cup of coffee. <laughs> uh, I, and honestly, I, I was hoping to uh, – I didn't want it. I'm not going to lie. I, I wanted – great for – you know, our, our first big sky opponent, Coach Kramer, he, he was ranked preseason. Um, the changes he's made there, and uh, I, I did want it. Uh, I wanted to go in and um, without that tag, and obviously it's some year, and it's good for the program. It's good, you know, it's good for recognition. I um, mean, all of a sudden they're talking about it, but no. Uh, at the end of the season, yes, ask me, um, you know, after week 11, um, uh, about the the rankings because then it just goes to playoffs and hopefully you know three or four teams the big sky can get in that's when that matters not on week not after week one gotcha all right so final question for you idaho state this week uh what are your thoughts on the Bengals? uh what do you see what jumps out at you when you see that team on film we don't have a chance <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love we, it. Uh, you know we were picked to win one game this year and i was there for 10 years and uh, a lot of history there. My kids were born there, you know. And I, uh, but I, everybody in the Big Sky has seen what uh, Coach Kramer's put together there, um, and they deserve it. He deserves all the recognition they're getting, and, and we're going, we're going into a hornet's nest. I've been there, I played there, and, and I know uh, the home field advantage, and I know the staff, uh, their coaching staff, and what they have on the football field. Um, we are underdogs again. Uh, so we'll try to put something together and, you know, keep the, uh, I love the no turnovers. You know, I love the lack of penalties. We had some, we had five penalties, Scotty, but you know, one, if we would, one was the best penalty in America. Uh, they're about to score in a kickoff return. I think my kicker tripped on the guy's face mask and, and, and saved the day, <laughs> but play a clean game like that and try to run the ball against them and then, and see what happens. Uh, but I, I know we're heading into a firestorm. Coach, this has been a blast, man. We appreciate the conversation. Congratulations on that win. Keep it rolling. We look forward to doing this again very nah, soon. Thanks. Thanks, Scotty. Stay high to the crew. Stay high to Oaks. I don't know where he's hiding out. You know, he's probably up, up in the, the, t- the, the tower now, right? He's on the 12th floor. Oh, yeah, for sure. No the, doubt. The office with the view. He's, he's, <laughs> he's made it. But say hi to the crew, and, and congrats to the big sky. I mean, Southern Utah, there's some things going on out there. You, you saw some games. They, they didn't get the W. You know, you have Coach Swigert over there. They knocked off Wyoming, and then he, uh, then he goes uh, and, and steals my – a label. I might have to shoot Coach Swagger. He's going bubble ball after our Barney ball. And, <laughs> you know, so there's a lot of things going on out there, a lot of drama. But keep it up. What a great conference. We got it, man. Hey, appreciate it. Thanks so much. All right. Bye. We got to get him on again. That was awesome. Bruce Barnum, kind enough to join us here on this week in Big Sky Football, head coach of the uh, of Portland State. All right, coming up, final segment of the show. Always a great conversation with this man, Craig Haley of Stats. We'll take a national look at FCS football. We'll also announce our players of the week. It's all up next. You're listening to This Week in Big Sky Football. We play to win, but it's bigger than winning. It's about authenticity, being true to yourself genuine dreams and a country big enough to fit them. 
values and hard work, giving your best and giving back. Working together, building a tradition bigger than any one of us and showing the world every day who we are and how we play. We're Big Sky. We are the heart of the American West. In the NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision, the game is played with perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. As he works to honor the game and respect his teammates, opponents, officials, and fans, every FCS player grows in his responsibilities as a student and as a member of his campus and community. Dedicated to personal growth and success in the classroom, the NCAA Division I FCS. Every down, every day. Welcome back to This Week in Big Sky Football. Final segment of the show. First show of the season, I might add. Uh, you're listening to another edition of This Week in Big Sky Football. Craig Haley of Stats is going to join us here in just a moment. Before we get to him, though, let's announce our Root Sports Players of the Week. Each week, Root Sports and the Big Sky Conference will select a player of the week in offense, defense, and special teams. Sometimes numerous players at each position, like on the offensive side where there's co-players of the week. Eastern Washington's Cooper Cup, who shattered pretty much every record at Autzen Stadium, earns the honors, as well as Northern Arizona's Emmanuel Butler. On the defensive side, Aaron Sibley of Portland State, and on special teams, Alex Vega of Cal Poly, who hit that 49-yard field goal to give the Mustangs the non-conference win over Montana. Remember, Root Sports, your official Big Sky TV partner for the upcoming season. First Big Sky game on Root Sports this season will be on September 19th. It's a non-conference showdown as Montana State will take on Eastern Washington. Should be a tremendous game between those two teams. All right, let's go out to the phones. Welcome in Craig Haley, once again, Executive Director of FCS Football for Stats. Craig, good to chat with you again. That means uh, football's back. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to be back. How you doing, Scott? Doing well. Good to catch up with you again. What a weekend it was for the Big Sky Conference with two wins over FBS teams. No, no doubt. It was the, the best weekend for any FCS conference. I mean, to win two is just yeah, that's a year's worth for for most conferences, and then you know to have some big wins, uh, you know like uh, Northern Arizona going on the road and winning at Stephen F. Austin. You know, obviously uh, the Montana uh, Cal Poly game was down to the wire, and a great game just showing you the depth of the conference. So yeah, what a way for the Big Sky to kick off its season. And even if you want to go back a couple of weeks with Montana getting that win with Brent Musburger on the call against North Dakota State in dramatic fashion, I mean, you really can't ask for a better start to the season than that. Yeah, th- that set a high bar, didn't it? It did, I mean, yeah. That was a, uh, the FCS kickoff was just as good as it gets. It had a playoff feel to it, uh, you know, great ratings, you know, a packed house, the biggest crowd ever in, in Washington Grizzly Stadium. I mean, just uh, didn't surprise me how great of a start it was. Let's talk about uh, Cooper Cup's outing in Oregon, 246 yards receiving, three touchdowns, 16 receptions. Just talk about what kind of performance that does for a young man uh, to kick off a season as far as being recognized nationally. Well, you you and I are not going to line up against him in a 40-yard dash, that's nope, for sure. That's not going to happen. <laughs> that, you know, he's right up at the top even going into the year as far as being a, a national player of the year. Um, he's going to go down. He's on pace to go down as one of the greatest receivers in FCS history. To, to do that against Oregon, you know, it just – takes you to another level. Uh, it, it really doesn't matter what quarterback is under center there for Eastern Washington. Cooper's just going to get you know, receptions, yards, and touchdowns. So I want to go back a little bit to Northern Arizona's game against Stephen F. Austin. Obviously, those wins against FBS teams are important, but in the grand scheme of things, that win on the road against Stephen F. Austin, when you're you know, a committee looking at that game down the stretch, if, if Northern Arizona continues to pile up the wins, that could be just as valuable. Yes. I mean, you, you know, the Big Sky has, you know, six, seven teams going into the year with, with playoff aspirations, legitimate playoff aspirations. And this just puts Northern Arizona right there to, to win a game like this. I mean, you, you have a veteran offense, uh, and then Case Cook has steps in and, and performs so well. Uh, you know, Casey John's going to get his yards. But this is one of those wins where it shows you the, the strength of the conference and shows you Northern Arizona is a legit contender. Interesting game coming out of the gate or uh, coming up this week as Idaho State uh, gets Portland State. Those two teams, obviously, with uh, big wins last week. Idaho State really turned that program around last year. What do you expect to see out of this game this weekend? 
Well, it, it should be a high-scoring game. I mean, uh, you know, unless uh, Portland State figures out how to stop that Idaho State uh, offense, but uh, you know, Portland State's going to want to put up some points too. So I do think it'll go back and forth. You know, being at home uh, in Holt Arena certainly helps uh, Idaho State. I mean, they were undefeated there a year ago. You know, so much back. Uh, you know, a new quarterback steps in and, and does well. You know, Portland State. You know, they've been so inconsistent in recent years. I mean, I, I think they have a focus, and I think they, you know, really want to do well f for Bruce Barnum. And, and, and to start a season like that, you know, they think, you know, this kind of game can, can put them on the map, uh, and now they're ready to, to take it to another level. Should be a fun t a game against a couple nationally ranked teams, Eastern Washington taking on Northern Iowa. Give me your thoughts on that one. <laughs> that, that's two one of those games where week two, you, 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 after you lost to an FBS pony, you say, okay, how much is too much? Because somebody here is going to come out 0-2. And, and <laughs> you got number seven, Eastern Washington, at number 14, uh, you and I. And, you know, they're two great teams, two playoff you know, caliber teams. But uh, I, I think it'll be a high-scoring game. It gets – so loud at, at UNI uh, inside their dome. Um, I do think Eastern Washington, you know, has players that that are used to that kind of environment. You know, especially coming off a game at at Oregon, they want to play with a lead. I mean, Northern Iowa is going to want to play a bruising style, run the ball. You know, typical you know uh, Missouri Valley kind of team wear you down. So I think Eastern's going to want to get out to a lead and and, and make uh, UNI have to play you know a, wi a more wide open style. Well, Craig, just the first of many conversations coming up this season. It's good to have you back. Uh, enjoy the week, and uh, let's do it again next week. Terrific. Thank you, Scott. Craig Haley of Stats joining us here on This Week in Big Sky Football. Nobody knows this game better than that man, and we're uh, always honored to be able to 16. chat with him. All right, so let's go through your lineup of games coming up this weekend. All these game times are mountain times. Eastern Washington will play Northern Iowa, that game at noon. Sacramento State will square off against Washington at noon on the Pac-12 networks. Weber State up against North Dakota State on at 1.30 on ESPN3. Drake will be at North Dakota, that game with a 4 o'clock clock kickoff on Midco and Fox College Sports. The first conference game of the year will be played between Portland State and Idaho State at 4.05. You can catch that game on WatchBigSky.com. That should be a tremendous game against those two teams. Southern Utah squares off against South 30. Dakota State. New Mexico Highlands will be in Northern Arizona at 5 o'clock on Fox Sports Arizona. Northern Colorado squares off against Houston Baptist at 6 o'clock. South Dakota at UC Davis at 7 p.m. And Cal Poly squares off against the Sun Devils of Arizona State at 9 o'clock that game on the Pac-12 networks. That wraps it up for us. Big thanks to Bruce Barnum to join us in our first segment. Bruce uh, Bubba Schweigart in segment number two and Craig Haley of Stats. I'm Scott Gerard. Enjoy the week of games right here on This Week in Big Sky Football.